All right, so the time has finally come. This here is my new $1,500 editing PC, and today I'm gonna show you what's all inside of it and why I chose these parts specifically for an editing PC. Oh, and also, huge thank you to Corsair for sponsoring like over half of this build. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be checking out what's all inside my new $1,500 editing PC and hopefully helping you guys decide on some parts if you're thinking about building one for yourself. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC building or hardware reviews, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly pay some bills. NordVPN is one of the highest rated VPNs or virtual private networks that allow you to browse the internet privately, securely, and with no history logs whatsoever. It's super easy to use, all you do is select which server from around the world you want to connect to and you're done. Enjoy clutch features like double VPN protection for extra security, an internet kill switch for the very rare time the VPN disconnects, super fast peer-to-peer -peer downloads, and unlimited bandwidth for just above three bucks a month if you sign up for two years. I actually signed up for a year of NordVPN at full retail price way before they hooked me up with a referral link and a discount code for you guys, so I obviously recommend them as my go-to VPN service. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash Zach or click the first link in the description to learn more. All right, so you may have noticed that we're in a completely new space down here in the studio. I'm actually gonna be making a dedicated video about my new editing setup in a couple of weeks, but today we're just focusing on the editing PC. In general, when it comes to editing PCs, there aren't that many things differently that you need to account for when compared to a gaming PC. This build can certainly handle gaming in 1440p and even with some ray tracing turned on, but there are a few decisions that I made specifically accounting for it being an editing build. The first main difference between an editing PC and a gaming PC is how much of your budget that you dedicate towards your CPU. In general, there's typically a sweet spot with a Ryzen 5 or Intel i5 paired with a beefy GPU for gaming PCs, but when it comes to an editing PC, you typically want to transition a bit more of that budget towards the CPU side. Although there's definitely some major exporting benefits with an Intel CPU because of the integrated graphics chip, I decided to go with an 8-core Ryzen 7 2700X because it can shred through a 4K timeline. Another factor to consider with an editing PC is the RAM, and that's because for gaming PCs, there's really no point in going above 16 gigs of RAM here in 2019, but for editing, it's a completely different story. From my research and actually seeing the results, Adobe Premiere will actually use as much RAM as you give it, so that's why I decided to go with 32 gigabytes. And finally, one other factor that you need to consider with an editing PC is your storage, and this is gonna completely depend on what your current workflow is looking like. For me personally, I actually store all of my ZTT footage over on my Synology NAS, which I made a dedicated video on, so that means I only needed a single 480 gigabyte NVMe SSD on this editing build. Usually for gaming PCs, you're gonna want more than that just to store your games. So with the difference between an editing PC and a gaming PC out of the way, remember, there's no like concrete line between an editing PC and a gaming PC, but now let's talk about what parts I chose specifically for my editing build. First up is the CPU, and I already explained why I chose the Ryzen 7 2700X because of its beefy eight cores, which is great for scrubbing through a 4 K timeline. I actually was using the 6-core Intel i7-8700K, and although that can certainly export videos much faster than my 2700X, I'm definitely getting better performance with the timeline, which has a higher priority for me personally. Cooling this 2700X is the Corsair H100 IV2, and you'll soon start to see the theme of Corsair parts in this build. Once again, huge shout out to them for sponsoring a good chunk of this PC. This H100 IV2 is completely customizable with the Corsair IQ app, which I already have because of my HS70 headphones phones and it allows me to squeeze out a decent overclock on my 2700X for more performance. The motherboard that all this is sitting on is the ASRock X470 Master SLI and I've shown this motherboard so many times on the channel at this point so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. For RAM, Corsair sent me a single 16 gigabyte kit of Dominator Platinum RGB 3200 MHz RAM so I actually decided to purchase another kit for a total of 32 gigabytes. To be honest, I was just super happy that Corsair sent me all this stuff and I definitely wasn't going to ask for more so that's that's why I went out and bought another 16 gigabyte kit with my own money. The graphics card that I went with today is the RTX 2060 Founders Edition, and this decision was honestly made more due to what cards I had in the studio at the time and not specifically for an editing rig. The 2060 is certainly a capable card as you can see from this video up here, but I didn't really make that decision due to it being an editing PC and it was more about me just having the card down here in the studio and I don't think I was going to do anything with it anytime soon. As far as storage goes, I only have a Corsair MP300 
480 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD because like I said earlier, for my personal workflow, all of my ZTT footage is stored over on my Synology NAS. I store everything over there and then whatever project I'm working on, I drag it over to my editing PC. This way I can benefit from a super fast NVMe drive, which makes a huge difference when editing. And then whenever I'm done with the project, I just drag it back over to the NAS. For our power supply, Corsair was nice enough to send this as well and they ended up sending me a standard 550 watt bronze certified CX550M which is definitely enough for this build. For some accessories, I got the easy DIY sleeved PSU cables because you guys know by now that I think these really tie in a build together. And finally, the white ambient light going around the edges of the case is the NZXC Hue 2 Plus which I'm definitely a fan of as well. They just upgraded the original Hue lighting kit which I still have in my now gaming and live streaming build. The Hue 2 has some upgrades like better adhesives and I absolutely love just shining all the white light in there so you can really see the details of this build. And for our last part, we have the case, and you've seen this already if you watch my recent $1,200 build guide, which you can check out up here. And this is the Antec DA601 case, which I'm pretty sure everyone, including myself, is absolutely digging. I absolutely love how the front of this case looks, and with the pre-installed RGB fans having the exact color scheme that I wanted, this was a no-brainer choice for me. So here you have it. Here's what the parts list is looking like for my 2019 editing PC build, which totals to anywhere between $1,500 and $1,600. Huge thank you to Corsair, NZXT, and Antec for sending me some of these parts as I really only had to buy a few things to complete this project. Speaking of this project, I'm going to be uploading a complete editing setup tour video here soon where I'll take a look at the rest of this desk, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell for that. Well, that wraps up my editing PC build tour. As always, drop a comment down below about what you think about this build or what you would do to change it. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, some more PC building action. You don't want to miss that video.